My name is Igor, I'm uh, from uh, XDAI project uh, and today I'm going to talk about uh, what XDAI is, uh, how we integrate it with uh, Chainlink and uh, what makes our partnership very exciting uh, for the users of XDAI and the future plans uh, for, the, uh, for, for the network and the tools that we're building. Okay, so uh, XDAI started as a community project uh, in Berlin on ETH Berlin Hackathon back in 2018. Uh, and that, at that time, we tried to solve a problem how to make uh, payments uh, on Ethereum, but without paying two tokens. At that time, we didn't have meta transactions or other ways of relaying tokens. And um, the idea of using a sidechain for um, tokens based on Ethereum, but bridged to another network was uh, something new, right? Theoretical concept, uh, which was, um, uh, which was already built uh, for this type of um, uh, uh, internet or communications uh, was known as uh, Heartspoon. It was uh, created by Jake Wan back in days. Uh, uh, but at that time, uh, no one used this concept uh, to bridge uh, uh, tokens from Ethereum and make them native tokens on, uh, on the separate networks, right? Um, so this concept is used um, several times later on uh, by projects like um, Binance Smart Chain and, uh, and some others, right? So what uh, XDAI network is in a nutshell, it's a sidechain, which is a network parallel to Ethereum. We're strictly following the Ethereum roadmap. Um, we don't maintain our fork and uh, all uh, uh, implementation of XDAI is within two core Ethereum clients within Nethermind and Open Ethereum. Um, to implement the proof of stake um, before it was um, implemented in, in, in Ethereum, uh, we had to um, kind of made our, our own changes and we uh, wrote uh, a new consensus uh, based on DAO principles with uh, staking, and um, staking is based on delegated proof of stake, uh, which is uh, good for community projects where validators are known and where there is uh, interest uh, for delegators to stake on this uh, validators and basically build a security for this uh, uh, proof of stake network, right? So the um, core token of the network is bridged DAI, right? So it can be redeemed one-to-one uh, -one back to, to Ethereum, and the network is using DAI for all um, for all tokens, uh, token transfers related to the native token. So besides it's, uh, uh, it's a stable token, which is uh, cool by itself, uh, it's, also, um, it's also a native token, right? A native token is... Um, um, is uh, easier to uh, to index, uh, like easier to query, uh, and uh, easier to operate in, in wallets. Uh, so XDA immediately was prepared to be a stable stable chain with uh, actual usage. So in uh, November 2018, uh, Austin Griffith uh, from um, uh, Ethereum Foundation uh, created a Burner Wallet, which was used on many conferences, and that was the major use case for XDA for a long time. So what's our advantages um, that uh, payments in XDAI can be made in a stable environment? Uh, if you think about real world business, it's always um, um, the case, right? So many um, many businesses which are using SaaS technology, they uh, have their volatile say, shares, right? But then shareholders get advantages in that, um, but they provide services and stable tokens, right? So this model is very convenient for application developers, um, and also it helps to plan um, uh, the, uh, the future expenses. And uh, um, usually it's, it's, it's quite convenient uh, for users to, to operate in stable tokens. Um, and uh, what is uh, also very essential nowadays, uh, it's uh, that uh, the consensus based on proof of stake system is uh, efficient uh, in a carbon footprint. Um, and uh, you know, even comparing to network, uh, like layer, layer one network with uh, lots of validators like ETH2, the consensus with a smaller um, number of validators, it still has a lower footprint, right? Which is essential for them, uh, some operations. We maintain a... Uh, uh, tools uh, for the Ethereum community used by many projects. Um, so we maintain the full featured uh, open source explorer, which is called Black Scout. Uh, this explorer is uh, used by you know, Ethereum Classic, uh, Silo, uh, RSK, you know, and many others. Um, so that's good to have an option where uh, sidechains and forks can install their own explorer without relying on centralized parties, right? Also, we are pioneered bridges. Um, so our first bridge was launched in uh, 2018. And uh, at that time, it was the first uh, bridge which uh, operated between two Ethereum networks. Nowadays, we see that um, the um, interoperability between networks is a common thing. And many networks are connected uh, by multiple bridges. Uh, even Chainlink uh, validate uh, operators are planning to be 
validators uh, of different bridges. Um, and this is quite exciting um, to see that um, what we started uh, back in days now is used by, by many uh, projects. Uh, OK, EIP-1559 should be activated on mainnet right now. So I'm a bit nervous. Uh, so that <laughs> Um, yeah, XDAIS uh, is used uh, pretty much by every day. There are millions of transactions happening uh, every uh, every every month uh, with uh, a lot of active users. And uh, we can see that uh, this type of scalability is actually helping to offload uh, traffic from the uh, from the from the main network and uh, uh, bring it to sidechain. And when we have a two-way bank uh, for tokens. Uh, this actually means that um, users can exit back to mainnet when they need to uh, return back to the, to the main network, right? This concept is, uh, is actually used uh, by, by many projects. If you think about uh, all the big um, you know, side chains uh, like uh, BSC, Polygon, and so on, you can see that uh, they're all connected to, um, to di by different bridges uh, to, 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 to mainnet and um, between each other. So, uh, but when we started um, XDAI, it was very kind of uncommon that uh, this can work in production without um, uh, security incidents and risks that people like, actually expected from it, right? So XDAI didn't have any security incidents. All bridges are working uh, for the for these years without any problems. And um, we can see that uh, uh, nowadays, uh, hundreds of millions or even billions uh, of uh, uh, TVL locked in bridges is a common thing, right? So people are actually using it, and uh, we can see that uh, on the right side that uh, uh, TVL and bridges are increasing. It means that uh, people are actually moving assets to sidechain and using it for different applications. So we have um, uh, this year we had official chain link um, uh, integration, uh, which uh, was uh, very well received by the community, especially with the growth of. Uh, uh, DeFi applications uh, on, on sidechain and uh, layer ones. Uh, so they they start to explore different scaling options. Uh, uh, for sure, the rollups and different sidechains. Uh, but um, I think that uh, the world is, uh, uh, is is uh, is going to be multi-chain, right? And uh, there are definitely there are some um, uh, opportunities uh, for XDAI to catch attention of the developers, right? There are some unique titles which are deployed on XDAI, for example, Perpetual Protocol, current version is, uh, is working on XDAI, and, uh, um, and uh, they're the main consumer of uh, Chainlink uh, oracles. And uh, as you can see on, on the graphs, that um, it's um, the number of uh, transactions contributing uh, from the from the Chainlink to the ecosystem of XDAI is uh, significant and it's used by many projects, right? So we expect that uh, and the demand for uh, different uh, feeds uh, will be uh, increasing, will be increased, uh, and uh, we hope that uh, uh, can bring new features uh, like um, uh, uh, randomness uh, and uh, additional feeds. Uh, um, for example, now we have uh, requests uh, for feeds uh, between uh, um, physical, fiat, um, real world uh, fiat assets. Um, so we hope that um, this uh, can be. Uh, Deliver it uh, by chain link uh, on uh, on XDA and other side chains. Um, so few, um, so our future directions uh, is about um, three main things: um, fifteen fifteen nine activation, which uh, just happened on mainnet. Uh, we plan to uh, activate it uh, on XDA and uh, use it for. Uh, uh, for uh, um, for decreasing supply of uh, of the stable token, which is uh, a bit unusual uh, for uh, for the uh, for the stable chains, uh, but this mechanism can be embedded into uh, buying uh, back and uh, and burning of um, uh, volatile tokens. Right. The uh, one exciting uh, development that we started to work uh, recently is a launching of a parallel beacon chain. We definitely see a demand for. Um, uh, for it uh, on the um, in Ethereum community. Uh, there are many, like uh, when Ethereum community saw the impact of uh, Kusama network to Polkadot community, many projects are trying to uh, call themselves as uh, like uh, Kusama for Ethereum. Uh, if you look into some narratives of uh, rollups or um, side chains and so on, you can see that uh, many projects are trying to be like a sister chain for, for, for Ethereum. Um, but um, till now, we, we don't have uh, such example. And uh, from uh, because Ethereum community is much uh, bigger than um, the uh, Polkadot community as, as for now, right? Uh, uh, we expect that um, as we had a boom of sidechains, uh, 
three, two years ago, right? When we saw demand for the scalability and when concerns about uh, POA and POS consensus of those side chains uh, became less important um, uh, because uh, we didn't see uh, like enough uh, security risks or incidents uh, from the core inf infrastructure, but more from applications deployed on this chain. Uh, we see that uh, the demand for EVM chains grows a lot, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, there are hundreds of EVM compatible networks and we can expect that uh, we'll see more and more, right? So what is the obvious direction for all this uh, EVM chains? Um, um, you know, right now we have a London hard fork. The next hard fork uh, will be more focused on uh, embedding uh, Ethereum into the... Um, uh, into the ETH2 beacon chain, right? And uh, what is called the merge. So we expect that um, during this uh, preparations uh, will be uh, added some, how to say, cut customizations uh, specific to EVM migration and for other EVM chains will be two choices, right? Just to follow Ethereum roadmap in some form and uh, be prepared to be merged into E2 or launch your own uh, E2 uh, side chains or find different consensus algorithms, right? Or stay uh, in E1 ecosystem for a long time. So, so far we didn't see any, um, any significant uh, development into launching a parallel beacon chain. So we started, we decided to start it. And uh, um, so far we um, had an agreement with uh, several uh, parties from the Ethereum ecosystem uh, and uh, plan to launch a parallel beacon chain uh, we, while keeping the same uh, uh, kind of security mechanisms as in Ethereum, but using different staking token, maybe optimizing it for um, different uh, thresholds of um, finalization, right? Um, so it will be good to see um, this parallel chains as a, as a playground uh, for the future uh, model of including uh, EVM chains into this into this model, because as we know that um, uh, in, in Polkadot, let's say there is a there is a there is a mechanism for for auctions uh, uh, on the uh, to, to become a, a parachain, the relay chain. But uh, in uh, ETH2 ecosystem, we don't have those options yet, right? So it will be um, good to see uh, implementation of uh, options uh, to be uh, included into the into the parallel beacon chain um, by um, uh, by these parallel chains, right? Because uh, for them it will be easier to to. Uh, to start this process. So that's what we are working on on Beacon Chain. We're uh, happy to start this initiative with Gnosis and uh, Depnote and uh, uh, Nethermind and some other partners and uh, um, welcoming everyone uh, who is interested in, uh, in participating in Parallel Beacon Chain uh, to be a part of this uh, interesting journey. So the last but not least uh, is what we're working on is in privacy preserving transactions. Uh, as uh, you can see that uh, there are not that um, uh, many options uh, for uh, keeping privacy preserving uh, uh, for um, uh, for in, within the Ethereum ecosystem. And the, there are project, definitely projects like ZK Money and Tarnada Cash, uh, but I think that we need uh, more uh, privacy solutions and also privacy solutions integrated into the uh, into the EVM chains and infrastructure around them, right? So what we're trying to do differently, so we plan to integrate um, uh, our um, uh, privacy solution, which is based on zero pool technology, uh, into the bridges. Um, so when Alice uh, transferred to Bob through the bridge, uh, they can uh, select an alternative receiver, and this receiver um, can be um, can 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 get the uh, required uh, amounts from the pool, not from Alice um, uh, herself. Uh, so from the uh, from the Charlie who is observing this transaction, this will be. Um, uh, there is no connection between Alice and Bob on different uh, sides of the bridges, right? So also this opening interesting possibilities uh, for cross-chain communication. Uh, if you have uh, several bridges uh, connecting to one network uh, and, um, and the, these bridges uh, have several similar assets, uh, let's say they have uh, uh, like different chains, uh, this can like users can deposit uh, uh, tokens on the Ethereum side and withdraw them, for example, uh, on the FDI side, right? Or they can withdraw them from BSC side, right? And um, the um, the idea of this pool that it's located on one network, but uh, withdrawals can, can be from different network and bridges uh, and the computations within these networks will help to facilitate these transfers. So what I want to say here that uh, privacy preserving should should be multi-chain, and uh, when we think about uh, relaying of private transactions, uh, we will see uh, multi-chain hops 
uh, between different uh, networks and uh, different uh, and different protocols, uh, and that's something that we are very excited uh, to work on. I think my time is up. Um, thank you very much uh, for um, for listening, and uh, very excited to be a partner of Chainlink and uh, continue to working together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Igor. Such important work happening there uh, on X Day. So we really appreciate everything so far. 